right. Is the media actually against him? Robert Thompson is the director for the Center for Television and Popular Culture at Syracuse University, and he joins us now. Professor, thanks so much for making the time. Uh, certainly, the host from Fox had the swords out for Donald Trump. I would argue, though, all the questions were more than fair. But Donald Trump runs a campaign based upon saying the media is full of BS, that the media is wrong, uh, that the media is sort of ruining America. In this case, though, when Fox is without doubt the preeminent destination for conservatives, and they have a lot of input into how Republican primaries uh, move forward, can Donald Trump have this uh, style against the media when in the opposition is coming from Fox News? Well, it uh, that does make it tougher. The question is, who's the underdog here? Uh, and also, it's an equation I'm not uh, sure he's going to be able to keep up. But we should start out by uh, actually looking to see if he's got any legitimate claims. I don't think those uh, questions were unfair at all. I think those were perfectly legitimate questions as the media is uh, uh, trying to vet these candidates and ask questions uh, that, are, that are meaningful. And actually, there were a lot of pretty tough questions asked to other other candidates uh, uh, as well. The only place where I suppose you might have uh, uh, been able to say last night uh, uh, was maybe a little questionable was when they started out with that pledge. That clearly was aimed at Donald Trump, and instead of uh, posing it as a question to Trump, they actually sing singled him out, knowing he'd be the only one uh, that was raised, would raise his hand. So as far as the media being unfair or too mean to him or whatever, in that debate, I don't think that's a legitimate claim. Overall, I suppose yeah. we have to say that when Trump first made his announcement, there were an awful lot of stories uh, about him having announced, and there was an awful lot of stories uh, in the papers and on TV about how we, the media, shouldn't be covering Trump, that uh, right. uh, it's a circus and it's our fault that we're uh, covering it. The Huffington Post even made that kind of sanctimonious announcement that they were going to now do all Trump stories on the entertainment page as opposed to uh, uh, the politics page. So he has been a subject that I think a lot of the people that cover politics and that are covering the lead up to this election have not quite known what to do with. Do you think that Trump's TV experience helped him last night or hurt him? Because as a media consumer, I felt he was overperforming at times, but then of course he was able to feed off the crowd in a way that you don't necessarily see a politician do in their first debate. Yeah, I mean, he's certainly been in front of a camera uh, a lot. He did that apprentice for, what, 10, uh, uh, ten seasons. Yeah. But it doesn't seem like he's able to modulate according to the circumstances. I mean, one could make the argument that that candid, blustery, I say whatever I think kind of thing was a good launching pad toward what he seemingly uh, is trying to do. I think, however, doing that, under the circumstances of a debate with nine other people up on the stage in front of you, uh, in, in fact, didn't work. He knows how to hit his marks. He knows how to deliver a line. But in that context, he keeps playing the same act. I mean, one gets a sense that uh, he's a pony that does one trick really, really well. But I think at that point, he would have done a lot better to uh, uh, play a little nicer. And from all of those polls and uh, mm -hmm. focus groups and everything, uh, a lot of people who went into that debate feeling positively about Trump came out of it feeling negatively. And by the way, that becomes important because that debate was seen by 24 million people. That's a lot of people. That's almost 10 times uh, the number of people who saw the other big TV event of the summer, Sharknado 3. Yeah, absolutely. And we can ask whether or not that was the Trump effect or is it just more people interested in participating uh, civically. I would it was the Trump effect. The former for the Trump effect. Let's, I want to get you out of here with this one on a broader question. Now, there's 17 GOP candidates in this race. I often feel that we in the media, maybe we give too much, too much oxygen to these candidates because it seems that a lot of them are just running for the free exposure, running to get some book deals running to bolster their image and, and take the free marketing. Where does the media sort of draw the line between whether or not to treat somebody seriously and, or, and, or just not to give them the free exposure? I mean, I think Fox did it to some degree with this top 10 uh, format. But going forward, how would you approach that? 
Well, I think it is true that a lot of people are running with no intention or, or belief that they're actually going to win for many reasons, including those uh, uh, that you talked about. Uh, I mean, part of it, you can't not cover. If you've got somebody that's announced uh, uh, they're going to run in the party, you've got to see who they are and uh, uh, cover them uh, to some extent. I think this idea, though, of the debate is really too old school for what we've got today. For one thing, it isn't the debate. You can't put 10 people up there for two hours with applause and all the rest of it and expect to get any debate. We, we could actually, a news operation could say, okay, each one of you 17, we're going to sit down and ask you questions about things for two hours, and we're going to follow up, and we're going to make you answer, and we're going to put those online, and whoever wants to pick and choose from those. Uh, remember Sarah Palin, when she, right. when we really got to see what she thought about things was when um, uh, mm -hmm. Katie Couric did those long-form interviews with right, her. her That's when you learn about a candidate's, uh, uh, what they really think about these things. Yeah, and they're less likely to do those interviews now after what happened with Katie Kirk and Sarah well, Palin. Professor true. Robert Thompson of Syracuse, enjoy some dinosaur barbecue for us.